Joey was a very um, personable kid. He was um, loved to talk to people, loved to um, engage with adults especially. Very happy. So what really got me interested in esports and just playing professionally in general uh, was watching a lot of the major Counter-Strike events. I watched pretty much everyone uh, in existence for a solid two or three years. Watching these players compete and just do something that they love is really, really inspiring. And it definitely, uh, I think it definitely influenced my decision to go into professional gaming. And it really, it kind of fueled the passion I now have for, uh, for esports as a whole. I think video games attracted me because you don't have as many physical limitations as you would playing anything else. My back has always been a pretty big challenge for me. I grew up with scoliosis. I had a spinal fusion when I was 18. I had a second spinal surgery two years later. Uh, and all the chronic pain and discomfort that, uh, that that caused me, it really took away a lot of things that I loved and, and prevented me from doing a lot of things that I really enjoyed doing. But with gaming, really, none of that matters. All physical limitations go out the window, and the only thing that matters is how good you are at the game. I think the situation presented itself with a lot of hope because you went through so much misery. I remember one thing. I remember when you were doing going into the hospital for the first time and you did a video, a YouTube video, and then it was watching the joy in your face saying, oh my God, the pain's finally over, we're gonna correct this. None of us, everybody thought that way. None of us realized that two years down the road or more, we would still be dealing with it. I think gaming gave you an opportunity to, to interact with many, many people who are recovering and being in bed, using a cane, using a walker, limited you in all kinds of social activities. So to be able to be online, uh, challenge yourself with a game that's pretty intense and be able to interact with all your teammates and get to the point where you know you can become very good at it to me is amazing so how did i get into the rainbow six professional scene uh it, honestly it was actually pretty easy the only reason i had such an easy time i think was just because the game was so new uh it really it hadn't been picked up before by any sort of professional league or any professional company uh interested in launching a league or anything professional really for the game um, I mean, we're talking season one. It was actually relatively easy for me to kind of establish myself in the scene. I made a team, uh, we started playing in the much smaller tournaments, um, and then eventually when we heard the rumors of ESL picking up Rainbow Six Siege for a professional league, I mean, we were obviously all for it. It was really cool because I remember sitting in bed with my mom and my dad, and we were watching on one computer um, Joey competing, and we were just cheering him on from the from home and it was really inspiring to see him doing something he loves and being able to travel across the world for it. I think what a lot of people don't realize about what it takes to be a professional player, honestly it's really just like any sport in the world. You need to be practicing with your team every single day, every single week for four or five hours at a time. I mean the amount of hours that I have put into just Rainbow Six, strictly you know preparing for an actual event, not even just competing in that event, uh, but the amount of preparation time that uh, you need to spend with your team to really practice and, and get all your strategies down so that everybody knows what they're doing, you know, before you get put into any situation, because really anything can happen when you step up on that stage. That's why I think it's really important to have that just deep, true passion for the game and for competing. I mean, if you have a drive to win and you have a passion for the game you're playing and you love what you do, I really don't think there is any limit to how far you can go. The only advice I think I can give anybody that's watching is if you find something in life that you love that gives you a sense of fulfillment and purpose, pursue that for as long as it's feasible.